It's in 1892, there's uh, two legislators, one's from Virginia, one's from North Carolina. Their names are Randolph and Macon, and they put some legislation out that uh, allowed for the construction of two campuses that were designed to prepare young men for the ministry. That gets created in 1892. They buy the land here. And, uh, I think it's obvious from what you're looking at out here that they chose some of the most beautiful ground in Virginia. It's an independent, private, co-ed prep school that has a military program as part of that. It was not military when it was founded. In 1917, when the United States got ready to go into World War I, uh, we changed to something called the National uh, Cadet Corps. We formed an army component of the student body. In 1975, we changed from Army to Air Force. So today, we're the only uh, independent private school with a full-time ROTC program that's Air Force anywhere in the U.S. We're a city on a hill. That's a reference to a biblical passage that talks about the fact that a city on a hill can't be hidden, and we're supposed to be an example, not just to Front Royal, but to the whole world. Um, I think the value is that the town is a traditional rural Virginia town. So students from Mongolia and China and South America come here and they don't learn uh, what they see on television as true. They don't hear what the media says about their country or our country. They meet the people that live and work in Virginia. Young people all over the world are the same. They want the same things, they have the same dreams, the same hopes, the same fears and they want the same things out of life. And so what happens here is that that very diverse international culture goes downtown and has dinner in a restaurant that's a small Virginia town. Several years ago, Harlan Crow, he's a very successful businessman in Dallas, Texas. Mr. Crow donated uh, a statue that serves as an honor guard for the Air Force Memorial in Washington, D.C. But when he commissioned the statue, he said, I want it made in duplicate. I want two of them just exactly alike. And of course, folks said, why would you want two? And he said, well, there's a little school in Front Royal, Virginia, and I want them to have one. So he asked Justice Clarence Thomas, the Supreme Court Justice, to come out here and dedicate our honor guard. I've lived and worked in D.C. for many years. Uh, the pace of life is slower out here. It's a little bit cheaper to live here. You've got canoeing. You've got hiking. When the leaves change, this is literally, truly one of the most beautiful places on earth. Um, you have the uh, Appalachian Trail, has a trailhead close by. So there are a lot of things you could do within an hour. In my first year, we did an open house on a Sunday and I talked with a man who had brought his grandson here to have him look at the school. So it's a Sunday afternoon, it's really beautiful here, and we're in the chapel. And I'm just talking to this gentleman about why he would have brought his, his grandson, because I'm still trying to learn what motivates people about the school. And the gentleman says, a long time ago, I came to school here for summer school. And uh, it was a good experience, but I was young and I didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't come back. And he pauses and he looks out the window of the chapel and he starts sort of tearing up a little bit. And I said, was it a bad experience? He said, it was a bad experience that I didn't come back. My life has never been what I wanted it to be. And I have to look back on that and wonder what could have been if I'd stayed here after that summer. I want that for my grandson. And I, as powerful as that experience is, I contrast it with, uh, they're mostly men who are old now, because we were all male until 1974. But the, the old guys who went to school here in the 1940s and 50s and 60s still come back here. and to a person they say when you get a private moment or you're having a drink you're just talking they say I don't know what would have become of me if it hadn't been for this place and if I've heard that one time I've probably heard it 150 times in three years from people who've been dramatically successful in any way you want to measure that to people who just live ordinary lives but they're proud of those lives and if we're doing that for young people, uh, I can go to sleep at night proud. Exploring your city, exploring your town, this is America.